Hi, I'm Sauce, and in 2022, I walked from Mexico to Canada along the Continental Divide Trail. I saw some of the most magnificent mountain ranges in the country, and today I want to share what I think are some of the best places to backpack along the Continental Divide. If you want to see more backpacking and Continental Divide content, be sure to check out my channel and don't forget to subscribe. For context before we dive in, I'm not afraid of a little bit of challenge in isolation, so these aren't necessarily the easiest places to visit, nor are they out and back, so they'll require some logistical planning and additional research on your part, but I wanted to offer some perspective of if I only had time for a one or two week trip and I wanted to visit the Continental Divide, these are the places that I would put at the top of my list. If you're looking for a longer or more accessible trip, be sure to stick around to the end because that one has a lot of different options. These are not necessarily in order, just some highlights that I think are definitely worth visiting if you are like most people and can't take the time for a multi-month through hike. First up is the northernmost section of the Continental Divide Trail and that is Glacier National Park. The CDT through Glacier is just absolutely incredible. We saw so much wildlife and I have been itching to go back ever since we left. Also, because it's a national park, there are lots of great roads and accessible trailheads, and of course, a lot of different trail options all of which I'm sure are incredible if you're wanting to do a non-backpacking sort of trip. Some highlights. The entirety of the CDT through the park is, again, amazing, but I definitely recommend prioritizing some of the passes if you can. Swift Current Pass, Pygon Pass, Triple Divide Pass, and then St. Mary Falls are a few places that really stick out in my memory as places I really enjoyed visiting in the park. Access. Because it's a national park, you will need to pass or have to pay a fee to enter, and you will also likely need reservations for campgrounds and then also permits for backcountry campgrounds. But the roads to trailheads are well maintained, so I do feel like in that regard, access is relatively easy. If you missed the permit window and you can be a little bit flexible on your itinerary, I definitely recommend trying to car camp or stay somewhere near the park and then try for walk-up permits from the backcountry office. There's also an Amtrak that goes to East Glacier, which is a pretty cool form of transportation you could use if you're coming from a larger city. Things to note if you wanna visit Glacier, like I said, you will need backcountry permits, so that's something to keep in mind. And of course, Northern Montana is grizzly country, so you'll definitely wanna carry bear spray and you'll need to bring a rope for hanging your food at the backcountry sites, but there are bear poles installed at all of them, so that makes hanging pretty convenient. Next up is the Wind River Range in Wyoming. I had actually gone to the winds for the first time in 2020 and was absolutely blown away. This range has held a very special place in my heart ever since, and I'm always planning ways to get back there. Some highlights specifically about the divide through the Wind River Range is that the Cirque of the Towers alternate is definitely worth doing. One of the most stunning places I've ever been, and I've actually never done the true CDT through that section, so I can't really vouch for what that looks like. Also, if you're down for a little spice and a little challenge and you've got the time, I definitely recommend the Knapsack Coal alternate. Once you get off trail in that area, it will definitely take a lot longer than your typical hiking pace, so just keep that in mind. But getting to see Take Home Basin was totally worth it. As far as access, the winds are notoriously remote. There aren't many trailheads, especially along the CDT, and the ones that do exist are fairly remote and down long dirt roads. Although those trailheads are fairly popular and I've definitely seen quite a few people there on the weekends and in the summer. If you need to resupply along the CDT, it's 10 miles, I believe, off of the CDT to get to a trailhead. When we went through on the CDT, we opted instead for a nine day food carry, which definitely made for some challenging moments. We actually ended up bumming food off people and that really helped get us through. When I did the section in 2020, we hiked from Big Sandy Trailhead to Green River Lakes, which isn't quite as long as the most accessible points along the CDT. So these are harder to leave and come from on a through hike just because again, those roads are so remote and not super accessible, but it's great for if you want a section hike and I definitely recommend um, getting a shuttle or someone to move your car for you while you're hiking. And then that way it makes the point to point really easy. Things to know, again, the winds are remote, so you'll definitely wanna be on top of your logistical planning for this type of trip. The winds can also have gnarly storms, so make sure you're aware of all of the precautions you need to take for that and have good rain gear. Certain areas in this range are very popular despite it being so remote, so you will probably see rangers and don't make the mistake that I did in 2020 and accidentally camp in an illegal camp spot because we ended up getting a ticket. So just keep in mind, you'll want to be following all the rules. You should be doing that anyway. But yeah, we didn't realize 
obviously that we were breaking the rules in that instance. It is again grizzly territory, so make sure that you bring bear spray with you and are using proper food storage methods. Next up is the Gila, which is actually an alternate on the CDT and not the official route, but it was so great. I don't think I know anyone who actually hiked the CDT through that section. It's also a place that I'd never heard of outside of the context of the CDT, so I don't feel like it's super well known. Everyone seemed to say that it was the highlight of New Mexico, and I definitely have to agree. Following the Gila River through the Gila National Forest was a true backcountry treat and unlike any place I've ever visited. So the highlights. The section that starts at Doc Campbell's and the Gila Cliff Dwellings and then going north from there was my favorite part of the Gila, although all of it is definitely worth a visit. You should also definitely visit the Gila Cliff Dwellings if you're in that area. There's so much history there and it's just kind of an incredible thing to get to witness. There are also several hot springs along the Gila River, which is always a treat. As far as access, starting again from that Doc Campbell's Gila Cliff Dwellings area seems reasonable with a car. There are paved roads but it will still definitely take some research to figure out where to finish and the most efficient logistical way to do a point to point if you don't wanna do an out and back. It's very remote in New Mexico. New Mexico does have great public transportation infrastructure, so I would definitely look into it if you need it for certain sections of your trip. Things to note, the Gila River section of the CDT is very rugged and remote. Once you're in the canyon, um, there are definitely ways out, but it's not going to be the easiest thing, and I definitely recommend looking into that before you leave. The trail is also very hard to follow and at times just completely disappears. You will be crossing the river a lot um, and get very, very, very wet feet. You're feet probably won't be dry for the entire time that you're following the Gila. My legs even started to crack open from going in and out of the water so much and how dry they got. And this happened to several people I know that were through hiking the CDT. You also definitely want to pay attention to water levels. 2022 southbounders unfortunately had to take the high route through that area because the Gila was flooded. Next up, the Wemenooch Wilderness in Colorado. Wemenooch Wilderness is part of the San Juan National Forest and it's the largest wilderness area in all of Colorado. You'll be paying for all of the beauty you get to witness and breath because most of the trail through this section averages above 10,000 feet. Some of the highlights for me were, we just really loved the trail towns on either end of this section. Pagosa Springs and Lake City were both awesome places to visit and I think would be a great base camp if you're doing a multi-day backpacking trip. But honestly, the wilderness that was in between these two towns would honestly make me visit even the worst city. The Knife's Edge and the Window are two features that definitely stuck out from this section, and there's also just tons of gorgeous mountain passes and valleys. There's a 35 mile stretch above Treeline, there's the headwaters of the Rio Grande, which was really neat, there's the Colorado Trail High Point, and there was the most marmots that I've literally ever seen in a single day. As far as access, because the Wemenooch is so large, it can be hard to access by road depending how deep in you are. But like I said, Pagosa Springs and Lake City are two towns that we use to access the wilderness area on our CDT through hike, but it's also near Durango and Silverton. If you wanna follow the CDT and you're just doing a section hike, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going from Pagosa to Lake City. You will be in it for the long haul if you do that. It took us eight days even when we were in through hiking shape. So I would recommend looking into like a loop hike or finding a reliable way to get into Silverton. Things to note, like I mentioned, there are really long stretches above tree Line, you'll definitely want good weather, you'll want to acclimate, and you'll want to be in shape for a hike like this. Although being in shape and being acclimated will definitely help you for all of the sections I mentioned because the Continental Divide is obviously just at a fairly high elevation in general. Finally, another beautiful section in my home state, the Collegiate Peaks Wilderness in Colorado. This section was an absolute treat. It's also an area that I frequented quite a bit when I lived in Denver. So it's a little bit more accessible as you can imagine. And it also felt pretty nostalgic for me. So it might be why it kind of holds a uh, fond memories of the CDT for me. The CDTC also has a great resource for hiking this section, which I'll link in the description of this video. Some highlights of the Collegiate Peaks Wilderness for me were I really loved Hancock Pass and Hancock Lake. Hope Pass was a really fun challenge for me and Twin Lakes is somewhere I've camped so many times. It was really fun to revisit that area in the context of a through hike. The section of trail right after you leave Monarch Pass from Salida is also absolutely gorgeous and that whole day was just unreal. There's also a ton of 14ers around this area so if peak bagging is something you're into, you can knock quite a few off the list if you do this as a backpacking trip. As far as access, like I said, Collegiate Peaks Wilderness is not too far from Denver. It's about an hour drive in some areas. So if you need to fly to get there, there are quite a few different trailheads you can then use to access it. If you decide to do the Collegiate Loop, then you don't even have to worry about the logistics of a 
point to point and you could do that in about two weeks. It might get a little more logistically challenging if you wanna do a point to point, but I still don't think it's impossible. There's also tons of great Colorado mountain towns that surround this area. So I think it would make for a really great little vacation visiting the small mountain towns and also going on an awesome backpacking trip. Things to know, again, you'll definitely wanna acclimate for a trip to the Collegiate Peace Wilderness. There's lots of climbing and a lot of time at or above 10,000 feet. So you'll wanna be in shape and ready for the altitude. And there you have it, my favorite backpacking spots on the Continental Divide. If you're interested in doing sections of the CDT, these are personally the ones that I would probably wanna start with. There are of course many incredible sections that I didn't name here as well. So definitely don't let them not being on this list deter you from visiting those parts of the CDT also. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and thank you again for watching. Bye.